And welcome to Fourth and Pain, the only pro wrestling show to be hosted by an NFL player and a weight loss champion. He's Redskins defensive end, Adam Carriker. Hi. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> former wrestling announcer turned weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. Hi. And this is Fourth and Pain. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Fourth and Pain. Like us on Facebook and whatever else you do, set your alarms. Have lunch with us each and every weekday at noon. Fresh content, low calorie, high energy, exclusively at Fourth and Pain.com. You know how I always do this at the beginning of the show? Uh, wh why? Well, well, because you got the four horsemen, you got fortune. You know, we're Fourth and Pain. So I do this to try to represent Fourth. My fingers are so jacked up. Like, first of all, it looks messed up. And then it looks like I'm only holding up three on this hand. So I have to, like, push this finger out. I'm trying to do four. I'm holding the pinky in, ladies and gentlemen. It's four for fourth in pain. I just have messed up fingers. And, and that, I apologize for that. And that explanation is why you need to also watch the video at fourthinpain.com. Yeah, watch the just video. Listening to us I'm just online. saying, I watch the video and I'm like, why am I only holding up three fingers? Oh, wait, it's my fingers. <laughs> My bad. Congratulations. You know how to count. Uh, this is fourth and pain, as we say. And Adam, you know, on that awkward note, let's just dive right in. What an incredible win for the Washington Redskins this past Monday night over the New York Giants. I will eat crow. This is not about me, but I will say I did not think Washington would win this game. You guys completely proved me wrong. You know, I believe about a month ago, there was an individual that sat in this seat looking almost as good as I do right now. And he said, don't throw in the towel. When everybody was bashing on Shanahan because they thought he had thrown in the towel, when everybody else was throwing in the towel, I said, hold on to that towel. Don't throw in that towel. And I'm not above saying I was right. Now, we got a long ways to go. You know, we got we got a month. We got four games. We're not in the playoffs. We're close. If, if it was to happen today, we would not be in the playoffs. But we're right there. We're right on the cusp. You know, we got a great opportunity to get four more wins. Our opponents got to play some tough teams, so you never know what can happen. But I'm glad nobody threw in the towel. Well, looking back at this Giants game, before we turn our attention a little bit to the Baltimore Ravens, I just – you have to be proud of your defensive unit because for the first time I can remember all season, instead of them getting poo-pooed and crapped on by everybody, they're saying, wow, you realize that they only held, held the Giants to X amount of yards. Had it not been for a big reception by Victor Cruz, I believe in the second half, New York would have only tallied 80 yards and change in the entire second half. That Eli Manning-led offense was completely shut down, stifled, and confused. Well, that's what I've been saying. The, the, the defense, you know, we got guys here, we got guys out. That's just part of football. It's part of the NFL. We have good players that are stepping right up. Rob, Jack, Rob Jackson got a sack last night. Jarvis Jenkins has been playing well against the run. Our whole defense plays well against the run. And against the pass, I think we've got some underrated players back there. DJ Gomes was the defensive player of the game against the Saints the first game of the year. Reed Dowdy, Mr. Do-It-Everything on special teams, and then goes out and starts like 12, 13 games every year, even though he's not originally supposed to, <laughs> you know, is extremely underrated. You know, to me, our defense has the capability of doing this all the time and for whatever reason everything just seemed to click on monday night and here's a serious question that i want to ask you as a player everybody's pointing to the first half versus the second half new york's offense dominated the first half the time of possession very telling there even though the amount of points they put on the board was limited but in the second half, everybody's pointing to these these mythical halftime adjustments that Washington made. And you only have a limited amount of time in between the second and third quarters. How much of an adjustment can actually be made in that five, ten minute span? Oh, I guarantee adjustments were made and they were not mythical. I mean, coaches make adjustments. That's what they do. That's what they get paid to do. And coach has, he's taken heat this year and I've stood up for him on this show more than a couple of times. And the fact is he's a good coach. I guarantee he made adjustments. And even in the first half, when they were giving up yardage, they only gave up 13 points. It was 13 to 10. It's not like they gave up 35 or 28 or anything like that. It was 13 points. So they weren't, they were giving up yards, but they were not giving up points. A lot of points anyways. It was just minimal, 13. And they held them to 16. That's an extremely good offense over there. Absolutely. I mean, just an incredible effort on both sides of the ball. Robert Griffin the third gets nominated for Rookie of the Week yet again this week. Shocker. Shocker. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy that just goes out there come hell or high water. He's going to play his game. 
And in front of that capacity capacity crowd at FedEx Field, which was very much, some have even compared that, and, and you weren't here for this, but compared Monday night's atmosphere at FedEx to the old RFK. The stands were actually rocking, and although there were some Giants fans in the stadium, a number of them, it was very much home field advantage for Washington. So in front of that capacity for out, if capacity crowd, I can't talk. And with all of that energy there, Robert Griffin III goes out there and plays an exceptional game. But he makes me nervous, man. He makes me nervous. He's gotten this concussion already once this season. He says he's going to slide. He says he's going to be more careful. Well, he does slide, but he slides maybe halfway, and he's still taking those shots. I'm thinking in particular to one play on the sidelines that they refer to as the Gumby play after the game because of the way that his legs folded. I mean, it, it's something he definitely needs to be careful his ability to run around is a blessing. I don't want it to become something that could hurt him because all of a sudden now he's taking these shots. And, he, and he's made a concerted effort to run out of bounds, to slide ever since that Atlanta game. And I think it's made a huge difference. And if he's got the opportunity, he's going to take it the distance. If he doesn't, he's done a good job of getting down. Well, I think you just don't hesitate. If it's even close, just run out of bounds, just slide, protect yourself. During camp, him and the linebackers, you know, he, they, they would – you know, I would have had you because we can't actually touch the quarterback. So they were like, I would have had you. He's like, no, you wouldn't have had me. You know, and, and it was there was some competitive fire going on. And after a practice, I'm like, you know what? If you get hurt this year, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, it, it, it's great that you can run and you have this ability. And that 76-yard touchdown versus, I believe, the Viking, the Vikings was absolutely awe-inspiring. But the thing is, we need you to be healthy. We need you to be on the field because he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So, uh, you know, just take care of your body and we'll be good to go. And what sets Robert apart from the other quarterbacks that are very versatile, very mobile with their legs is he is a complete athlete. He's a guy that can also step back in that pocket and has a rocket of the arm with really good accuracy and can find that receiver downfield. It's not as though he's a one-dimensional guy by any stretch of the imagination. And that goes to your point. He needs to take care of himself more so that he has a longer shelf life. Now, I got a question. You know, massages, you know, they're, they're big and, you know, getting the, the, the crap out of your muscles and rejuvenation. Would you be willing to give him a massage once a week just to help out the team? Robert? How dedicated are you? I, first of all, absolutely not. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I'm so sorry. So you really are a Giants fan. I am not a Giants fan. I'm not a Cowboys fan. I'm not an Eagles fan. I've checked my fan you, card. I've tried wow. to explain this I'm to you I'm disappointed in you. Here's, I mean. You got to support the team, man. You would, <laughs> what's in it for me? That's the, what he, it boils he, down gonna to. He's going to be healthy. He's going to be fresher and he's going to play better. And again, Ergo, what's in it for me? He's playing better. Are you what's not a fan it? of the team? I said I checked my fan card, Adam Carricker. Well, I am an you impartial journalist. You got to root for the team. No, you're not. I am impartial the journalist. The first day you went into the media room, you wore a Redskins t-shirt. Because it was the only thing I had that was clean, Adam. It's called laundry. And, well, I'm also a swinging bachelor. Some things never That's, change. I don't, I'm not sure what that means as far as doing your laundry. It means bachelors <laughs> don't do laundry. You, I did laundry. You've been lucky enough. I did laundry. To, you've had a girlfriend in college. You've had a wife now. I'm sure your parents did your laundry for you. So you're mad because you didn't have a girlfriend. You can't get a girlfriend. But you're no, upset. You know what I just remember? You're upset. No, you know what I just remember? <laughs> I'm going to call you out on call your BS. Out. This is call the me same out. guy call me that out. when we first started doing the show over the summer had no idea how to do laundry. <laughs> I have to wash your friggin' rags and your friggin' socks. Don't tell me you've been doing laundry. You fr no, no, I no, got you. I didn't say I did laundry. I just had clean clothes. Uh -huh. It doesn't mean I did it. Exactly. <laughs> Life of Brian over here. Wow. Come at me with that garbage. I love that Get you brought that up. Face. I love that you brought Get that up. Get out of my face, Crow man. Trot. Unbelievable. I don't even know where we were. I don't even know. We were just I'm talking about fire. Robert, and you were going to give him a massage, or you weren't going to give him a I'm massage. I'm not going to give Robert a massage. The bottom line is you just need to take care of your body because, obviously, he's got the physical tools. He's not overwhelmed, which a lot of rookie quarterbacks would be. The guy can play. We just need him to be healthy. That is that is the bottom line. I was just ribbing you about the, the massage thing, and you got overly sensitive because you can't get a girlfriend. Shut up, Adam. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> That's not what you always say. <laughs> let's uh, let's turn our attention to uh, to the Baltimore Ravens this coming Sunday. A depleted Ravens team on the defensive side, sans Terrell Suggs, sans Ray Lewis, yet still a very dangerous team with a nine and three record. Lost last week to the Pittsburgh Steelers, but this is not a team that you can take lightly. 
Well, absolutely not. I mean, they're still the Baltimore Ravens. They, they're they 9-3. and three. They have one of the best records in the AFC in the entire NFL. And they played a lot of the beginning of the season without Terrell Suggs. I mean, he came back when they played the Texans, and that game didn't go very well. He did get a sack, and he's been playing well since he came back. But the fact of the matter is they, they're out. They're almost used to playing with that, and probably more so than they are with him. How telling is it that the odds makers came out this week and actually have the Redskins as the favorite? Does that mean that you guys have made such an impressive statement over the past three bodies of work that they're like, wow, this team is for real? I think it speaks to the the respect that they, they have for Ray Lewis and Terrell Suggs. Uh, I think it also shows that we've been pretty impressive the past three games, but the fact of the matter is it, it doesn't mean anything. If you're favored by 40 or if you're an 40-point under, underdog, all that matters is what you do on the field. Uh, and on Sunday, I, I, I think they're going to pull out the victory. I think it's going to be an extremely close game. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch, but I think the Redskins will eke out a close game. I, You know what? I'm actually inclined to agree with you. They have proven me wrong. And uh, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pick against them until they give me a reason to. And over the past three weeks, uh, they have put me in my place. And uh, this is the the thing that really stood out to me with this win on Monday night, Adam, was that this is not the same old Redskins team. And since I've been covering them, and since I was, you know, following them growing up, it has always been or often been the same rigmarole. There's something different about this team this year. There's something different. Yet nothing ever changed. The team was perennially in the same holes. And for them to come out Monday night, close out that game, get their third win in a row against a division opponent, three wins in a row in the NFC East, no less, that says a lot to me. That speaks volumes. And for once, you can honestly say, and I will honestly believe, that this is not the same Washington Redskins team. Well, I tweeted after the game, right before I went to bed, you know, that's what a playoff team looks like. And we're one game behind the Giants. They, they got a lot of tough teams to play yet this year. Uh, our, I, I don't know. I think we just play one team with a winning record. Not that those other teams aren't good, can't beat us. But I think other than the Ravens, you know, our, our schedule is a little bit softer. And so we have the potential to catch the Giants. If that doesn't happen, you know, we are right in the thick. Excuse me. We are right in the thick of the playoff or the, uh, the wild card picture. You know, the Seahawks and the Bears are ahead of us right now. But the Bucks, the Vikings, and the Cowboys, who are all right there with us, we have the tiebreaker because we've beaten them all head to head. So we have a real good shot at getting into one of those two spots, either the division champ or the wild card. Right. Beyond the Ravens this weekend, uh, you still have the Cleveland Browns. Uh, you have the Philadelphia Eagles and the, and the Dallas Cowboys. And the Cowboys, that's correct. So, and and of the three teams that are vying for a playoff position, specifically in the NFC East, I don't even like to talk about wild card. I think that the true road to the playoffs goes through your division, and I think that the Redskins are in the best position. Even though you're still one game behind the Giants, you are in the best position to actually win the division, your first division title since 1999. Well, they still the, the Giants still have to play the Saints. They still have to play the Falcons, and I. I believe they still have to play the Steelers this year. The, uh, I don't have or the, the Ravens. It's one of it's one of those two. So their their schedule is pretty daunting. And to me, honestly, the division is obviously better. You get an automatic home field playoff game. Hopefully, a higher seed. But it's been proven wild card teams can do it. And all that matters is that you get into the playoffs. And once you get into that second season, as we call it, you never know what can happen. Exactly. And and you know what? I'm actually going to pull up real quick before we wrap up the segment. I, I tweeted out uh, all the remaining opponents for the rest of the year. And here's who the Giants still have left on their plate. Uh, they are hosting the Saints this weekend. Then they travel to uh, Atlanta. Then they travel to Baltimore. And then they wrap up the season at home against the Philadelphia Eagles. That is a brutal three-game stretch that they're about to embark on. And even though the Saints have lost their past two games, this is, let us not forget, also a Giants team that has now lost three out of their last four. And then you look at the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys go to Cincinnati. That could be a sneaky game. Then uh, they host the Steelers, not going to be easy with or without Ben Roethlisberger, but you got a picture, you know, this is uh, two weeks away now or, or a little over a week and a half. The Steelers are going to be no picnic. Then uh, they host the Saints again, no picnic, say what you will, that Drew Brees, Brees factor is always going to loom large. And then biggest game, this could be just a huge game to wrap up the season in Washington. Yeah, that last weekend when the Eagles and the uh, Giants play, and then we we take on the, uh, who's that, Dallas? Yeah. I mean, that, that could very well decide the division. And what's nice is we're 3-1 and one within the division, and I believe the uh, the Giants are 2-2 two and two and the Cowboys are 1-3. and three. So we're going to have the most likely the tiebreaker within the division. And, uh, you know, we, we beat those teams there. We're going to have the head-to-head tiebreaker too. 
and a uh, lot of excitement around the team. And uh, last thing before we wrap it up, uh, I, I wanted to make mention and a special shout out to a guy on Twitter by the name of uh, Mark BDK. Uh, who tweeted us and he said, you know, I hope Alfred Morris gets the belt back again. He deserves the fourth and paint title. Went to an appearance where Alfred Morris was signing autographs on Tuesday and then shot us the picture and said, I hope you get the belt back. That well, was pretty cool. That I, was very cool. We're growing and and so it's just great to see the excitement around the show and it's great to see Redskins fans excited about the team again. This town, Adam, you may not have experienced that since you've been here, but this town truly does live and die with the Redskins. The mood of the city of Washington, the entire DMV area, very palpable with the Redskins win and loss record. This last month of the season is going to be exciting. Every game is going to be fun to watch. It's probably going to come down to that last weekend where we're all playing our, our division foes and they're all, all of our other foes are playing their, their foes. And it's, it's going to be exciting. And I think we're going to get into the playoffs and I think we're going to end up winning the division. Um, it's going to be very close, but uh, I would not be shocked. And not a shot at the Nationals. You think back to October when Natitude ran rampant and Washington Nationals made the postseason for the first time in, uh, you know, in, in their franchise like history. Ever? But, you know, it was the first, the first time, time that there ever? was – Well, since they've come – to Washington, I think the Expos. Well, that's speaking. what I meant. Since Washington, but there hadn't okay. been uh, any sort of playoff baseball in, in DC since 1933. But here's the thing: the buzz surrounding the Redskins' past three wins in the regular season already surpasses the excitement around the Washington Nationals. That is very telling. And the other point that I wanted to make, I know you know we we got to take it home. But you have often said to me you like college football because every game every week counts. Well, for the Redskins, the remaining season, every game, every week counts. Essentially, every weekend is a playoff game. I would agree with that. This last month, uh, every game is going to matter, and every game is huge, and what our division opponents do is, is equally as important. It's fun, uh, fun to watch, and uh, so you just be sure to keep up with us at 4th and Payne as we break it all down. Player insight. Wacky shenanigans. I think it's a winning combination, my friend. Absolutely. On that note, we are fresh <laughs> out of time. I'm Chuck Carroll. Thank you so very much for believing in our weirdness. I'm Adam Carricker. I have the largest arms on the D line. Love my shirt. Peace out, fourth and painters. Peace out, fourth and painters. <laughs>